Hey everybody, is this working? Are we finally up? <laughs> this is my first time doing a scheduled stream, so I apologize if uh, if things are a little wonky at first. I kind of like this idea though, but it's um it's a little confusing and not very intuitive, like you know everything else on YouTube these days. Uh, my stream is coming up now, but it looks like it's in it looks like it's in. Uh, Atari 2600 resolution. All right, here we go. Uh, please let me know about levels and everything. Uh, let me know, you know, what's working, what's not working. But today is basically just going to be a really laid back stream where I kind of just do what I normally do on a daily basis, but try to do it on camera. Um, I'm also, this is the entire space that I have to work with. Like this right here is like half of my wingspan, not even. So we're, there's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of mixing up, right? But um, <clears throat> what I wanted to test today, because I don't know if this is going to end up being a post or if this is all going to be a complete and total bust. So I figured why not do it live on stream so I get to hang out with friends and make something fun of it. But I got two converters. Um, this is an RGBH feed to S video or video converter from Shiny Bow, which all of these things notoriously work fine for S video, but terrible with, um, with video games games and there's also uh there's also another one it's the same exact one that lewis cesaron just did on uh, his channel so i'm going to do this first because it looks easier i just want to connect uh, a couple more cables um i have a, a monitor here that i usually use <coughs> excuse me usually used to test with and the retro tank 5x which i could finally see that on camera now all of these months of streaming with that and not being able to tell anybody um, so I guess I'll just do an unboxing, take a look at this thing and see, and I'll get my other cables ready here. It's uh, kind of striking that I have my cheap webcam uh, as the top-down view and like a really nice GH5 camera as the me view. If it were easier, I would have the nice view down. Y'all already know what I look like, so there's no, uh, <laughs> no reason for that. But let's do a quick unboxing and check this thing out. Yeah, Josh, I always end up standing in the, these videos. It started because um, I ruptured a disc in my back a couple years ago and couldn't sit down. Uh, I wasn't really in pain unless I sat down, so I just learned to stand all the time, and I actually found it to be kind of healthier. So it's, uh, that's basically just what, what I ended up doing, and it's fun sometimes. I can't play video games standing up. Maybe I'm not smart enough. Maybe it's like talking and chewing gum, but everything else seems fine. Either that or if I'm writing like a, a really in-depth script for a video, I gotta be sitting. Uh, what lens? It's the 35 millimeter equivalent. If you go to the Amazon store, that's that's in the link in the always in the link in the description. I have it there. Um, so this is it. I don't know if you could hear this. So I think we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna open this up first before plugging anything into it. <coughs> Oh, hey, River. Welcome. Uh, this is a very new thing for me, so this isn't normally what I do, but I would like to keep doing it. Uh, I love doing live streams. The, the number one thing that holds me back is just space. Space, I do a lot of things at the same time, so it would be really annoying for people to try to watch, and a lot of times I'm working on secret prototypes and stuff, uh, but this is just these are just things I bought off of eBay that I figured, let me test them out. If they're cool, I'll write them up. If they're not, I'll just toss them in the garbage or give them away or something. These devices are such a pain sometimes because they're usually just too long to use an electric screwdriver to get in. Uh, but, yeah, so that's just a little too long for an electric. But you can't really get a good grip with these smaller ones. world's most expensive maraca pretty much i can't tell you how many products i work on that are a pain to get out that i end up doing like three hours worth of work and an hour <laughs> an hour's worth is just dealing with screws game cubes are like that game cubes are pretty easy to work on but they just have a ton of screws so if you don't have an electric screwdriver you're going to be there for a while all right so still still shaking Can't quite tell what's still moving around. Okay, one more screw. 
actually, uh, Fenris, there's a bunch of really, really good super guns out there. I was just reviewing those yesterday while I was on Jimmy Hoppe's stream. I was taking a look. Um, there's one really cheap one coming out that's going to be the best for everybody who just wants the cheapest possible way. Um, the minigun and the Hass are very good. Um, and there's a couple others that I'm testing. I was testing the Ashenworks one yesterday, which is very good with a couple of caveats, but he's been great to work with, so I'm sure it's going to be, it's going to hold up to the rest. Oh, this, that sound? That's just a screw stuck in one of the posts. There was nothing flopping around in here. Um, but let's, uh, you know, let's take a look at this. Let's see if, I'll hold this up to the camera. See if it could focus. I'm gonna snap a pic real quick, just uh, just for my records, because I have a lot of friends that would love to see the circuit on this, and I guarantee they all are already gonna know what the chip is that's been uh, that's been soldered or that's been scratched off. All right, another quick picture of the back. we go. All right, let's get it all back together. Plug the sucker in. Let me see if I can get that screw out just so I don't make myself nervous and think something else is going around. Fender said they used the C-Box 2. Um, those are pretty good. Um, just be careful with sync on those, but otherwise they they seem to be pretty decent. Um, I have a few friends that tested them. I don't think I've ever tested one personally, certainly not on camera or for a review or anything. All right. No more rattle. I always double and triple check if everything's lined up just because I've had some uh, I've had some unlucky ones in the past where <laughs> I, I put everything back together and it's not working and it turns out I just misaligned something. Did I put it in the right one? No, probably not. Uh, Uber Disco mentioned they're using the RetroTINK 5X for S-Video and Composite through the OSSC. I don't understand that. Um, using the RetroTINK 2X, um, especially like the 2X multi-format or something, that I could understand because you could do, use it in pass-through mode and take advantage of the comb filter. But uh, why would you use that the 5X through the OSSC? I'm not like criticizing. I'm just wondering like, if I'm missing something here, because I don't think you're you're gaining a thing from that. But you know, you never know. All right. Something feels stuck. Yeah, I think this cable did come out the side. I wasn't paying attention when I took it apart, but I should have been. That way it could, yeah, all right, that makes more sense. Slide that in. You know, you would think with all the stuff I work on, uh, putting stuff back together, <laughs> would be a little bit easier than this. This is odd. I wonder what I'm caught on. Um, Joseph Morris said they think he's using it for the composite video inputs. Yeah, but 
the RetroTINK 5X already outputs all of the same resolutions as the OSSC and higher, so I just don't understand the need for both. I do have a lot of friends that love just love plugging weird stuff into other weird stuff, so you know, no shame if that's it. If I can't get this together, I'm just going to test it without <laughs> without bolting it completely back. Well, this is embarrassing. My first stream like this, and I can't even get the damn plastic back in. Yeah, that's very odd. I'm just going to test it like this then. So it's got um, RGB HV inputs. So I'm hoping that it'll accept just RGB H, uh, horizontal sync. Um, it says RGB HV to video converter, but even if it doesn't, I have some other tricks that we could use to convert this. So um, I have a Super Nintendo. Let me get these plugs out. These are retro access BNC cables that I'm just going to plug directly in. H, blue, green, red. All right, I'll try with S video first. I know this cable's a little long, but I grabbed a long one in case I need to try it on my CRT. All right, plug that into the Tink 5X. And let's get some power. I'm gonna drop these screws in a magnetic screw holder I have. Um, I kind of recommend everybody gets these. They're super cheap. The only problem is if you work on a lot of projects like I do, you totally forgot what these other screws went to. <laughs> I think some of those are Genesis. I think these are PC screws that I forgot that I even had, and who knows what the rest of them are, but. All right. All right, we have a power light, so I'm gonna switch scenes. Let's see if the whole stream breaks when I do that. I think I'm still here. Uh, so let me switch inputs on the tank. Okay, so it is accepting horizontal sync. Uh, it looks kind of weird though, but oh, it looks very weird. And uh, now it's just plain old freaking out. All right, that's interesting. Let me go back to this scene for a second. So I'm just going to make sure I'm not pinching anything. I really thought I was careful when I opened that up, but I just can't. Uh... I don't know how delayed the stream is here. What I'm looking at is definitely not what. Uh... Oh, there we go. OK, good. So as far as I know, my table is completely non-conductive. So I put PCBs on here all the time, and I do wipe it, wipe it down. I actually got these on sale. They're terrible. They leave a streak. Don't ever use them for actual, actually cleaning your screen. Uh, but I bought like a box of four for five bucks or something. So I always wipe down my table before and after this to make sure there's no metal shavings or, or any potential of like of me doing this and having it short on the bottom. Having a rubber mat would be better, but I, I think I have one buried down there, but there's such a limited space, I just can't even. I mean, everything would probably slide off. I'm very, very looking forward to moving and uh, getting a real people-sized place where I could have a real setup, a static mat and all that stuff. Blue, 
right, uh, I'm gonna switch over to the other view so we can see this live. Uh, Neil wants to know if I live in downtown New York. Yeah, I'm in Manhattan. Um, I moved here a couple years ago for a uh, long story, but basically family work reasons and uh, love living here, but you really got to be a millionaire to, to actually have a good time living here. And I am not, so uh, I kind of make do with what I got. But I've always kind of lived like that, so I have no problem with it. Oh, oh, we st all right, so we're starting to see the image deteriorate. It started out fine, and then it's kind of losing sync and going crazy. Yeah, all right. So uh, I'm going to try <coughs> composite video instead. Oh, Uber Disco just said they're running the retro tank through the OSSC for brightness settings. That makes sense. That might be something that Mike adds in the future, but if not, uh, OSSC Pro and um, the Morph are going to be more pro-oriented scalers. All right. See if composite works at all. Uh, and let me set this to composite. All right. Composite. All right. Okay. Composite looks decent, actually. Let's see if this goes nuts like S video. I'm assuming yes. Oh, here we go. Same exact thing. Uh, so let me think. Um, this could be the fact that we're running horizontal sync and there's no vertical sync going to it. So we would have to convert it first. Um, hmm. Let me think. Look it out. Uh, let me switch views. I don't know if anybody could see any of this. Probably not. So other than my stupid socks and sandals, yes, go ahead and make fun of me. I'm standing by a window and it's chilly. But um, my desk is actually four of these I like Target IKEA plastic bins, uh, two layers of them, and then one of these like standing adjustable desk things. Uh, and all of my stuff is buried into all of this. That's why anybody that's walked the uh, watched the weekly Q and A's, sometimes somebody ask a question, I'll be like, I have that, and you'll just see me fumbling around underneath oh that's wow i i did not plan for this but that's pretty funny um i think i'm going to be able to use an extron rgb interface to do that i have to get it out so you have to excuse me for one second All right, I think this is what we're gonna try. And uh, here's the other issue I have when I'm working on stuff is we're out of space. So let's uh, move the keyboard. I'm gonna try to see if I can jam the retro tank over here. All right, that works. Um, All right, so this is BNC cables. <laughs> if you hear a massive crash, call 911. You know, it's funny you say that. I do, um, or I did when I was feeling okay, these like Skype workout sessions with a trainer I'd used who was absolutely awesome. And at one point, right when I was starting to get sick, I guess I didn't realize I was getting sick. And he's like, hey, man, um, I'm, I'm not trying to be funny. I'm sorry. I hope you're not insulted. But... Uh, do you have like a phone number to call if you pass out? And I was like, nah, man, just leave me here. I'm in my own apartment. He's like, no, like, what if you fall over and hit your head on something and I'm all the way in a different state watching you bleed out? I'm like, oh, you're right. Here's a, an emergency contact number. <laughs> so <laughs> if anybody, uh, if anybody, 
If that happens to me now, call Beast. Beast will come save me. So this is an Extron RGB 192. I bought this just because it was like $4 or something with free shipping. Um, and I wanted to also test it because it has this weird proprietary connector. And I'm like, well, if that's just a basic connector like you would find for the audio stuff, can't I just find a cheap PSU with the same specs? And I did. This entire thing, including shipping, cost $10. Um, and it will convert pretty much any sync to any other sync. Um, and I think there's things like uh, horizontal shifting and things like that and serration control. So that's what I'm going to be using to go from RGB-S to RGB-HV. Um, and let me get some more adapters. So I'm still going to need these things, but I'm going to use... One of these, which runs this. All right, not bad. Didn't take too long to find them. Ever considered a bigger bench or space really forbids you for doing so? Yeah, um, it's. I'm embarrassed to show off my apartment. Uh, I usually, when I have people over, clean as much as I can. I mean, it's clean. It's not, like, gross, but it's cluttered. Whenever I have people over, I hide everything in the bedroom. We actually have that now. We lived in a studio apartment for, like, I think almost two years. But, like, right in our living room is a shipping station now because I've been packing up and shipping a lot of stuff. Like, our dining room is usually my actual, like, sit-down desk if I need to. It, it's pretty bad. So, it's, uh... Yeah, this is as big as I can get. And especially with streaming, too, because I could use our kitchen table that, you know, we use for everything else, but uh, I don't know. Once I get a real place, though, all I want is a basement. Not even a finished basement, just a dungeon. I'll put up a bunch of really bright lights like I have up here. Uh, it would be totally fine. Set up a bunch of cameras. So, VNC to RCA connectors. I'm going to need one more. Any other fat guys here? My, I, I can't be the only one that when I sometimes need some support, I use my gut to hold something up. <laughs> Gotta make do, right? Uh, one more of these. Uh, Lucas said they're making their own Dreamcast SCART cable. Ooh, good luck. Making cables is hard. They want to know where to put the switch and the console end or the uh, SCART end. Um, if I were making it myself, I would, uh, I would put a little box. I would have like a three-inch cable, you know, plug into the Dreamcast like a normal cable. The little box would have a switch, and then the rest of the length would go to the end. Um, but I don't know. It's I don't think that's like Genesis cables where you really need the resistor on the console end. I don't know if that's a requirement. That might just be, you know, oh, it would be nice, but not required. Oh, yeah, the belly is an extra arm. Yeah. Jay Russell's Gaming wants to know if a guy like him that weighs 130 kilograms count. You, to, please don't forget I'm American, and I'm not smart enough to do that in my head. The smartest I got was when I was going back and forth between Celsius and, uh, and Fahrenheit when I was in other countries. All right. Meso cables, your power coming through here. I'm going to switch back over. Uh, all right, here's the capture window again. Um, everything is as you just saw it, except now I am about to plug power back into that converter. And let's see what we got. That's worse. I'm going to flick some switches on that Xtron device. Sorry, I gotta like jam my head back here a lot. Yeah, all right, so RGB, HV didn't do a darn thing. 
Um, Daniel Black wants to know if the reason external uh, RGB to composite doesn't work right on consoles because it jail bars. I don't think it's inherent to that. I think what it really comes down to is it needs um, the timings as well. And you would have to make an adapter internal to each console to do so. Um, I This is one of those subjects that like I grasp when my smarter friends describe it to me, but I don't grasp it enough that I'm confident describing it to other people. So... Um, you know, I'd rather just be honest and be like, I don't freaking know than to try to lie my way through it or something. All right, let me grab the tink. I just want to try S video again before we put this sucker away. Okay, S video. And. Nope, nothing. All right, so. All right. Marcos, 285 was your peak. I think um, I think 280 was, was my fattest. And you saw it in my face, but not really the rest of me. Um, but it's weird because I would never call myself healthy. But at the same time, like, I had friends that did, like, CrossFit stuff. You know, people would go, people that would never touch a tire in their life, go to a gym and pay money to flip tires over and over. And they'll come to the city and we'll walk around all day. And three hours into it, they're begging me to take a cab. And I'm like, why wouldn't you just walk? It's beautiful. It's the whole point. So I would never call myself in shape, but I was never, like, near death or anything like that. Um, all right. So... Let me clean this stuff up. It's going to be really boring to watch, I know, but if I don't put this stuff away, I'm not going to be able to uh, have room to test the other thing. But I think I would call this one probably useless. Um, I'd be willing to bet if we found a VCR, we could probably try to do, like a, a PAL VCR, for example, it would probably do it because it's probably meant for TV signals. Um, or it could be that I have an NTSC console and that's why it won't work. But if that's the case, then why did it start out working sort of and then not? That would be the thing that would bother me about it. Because it, it does say NTSC right here. My console says NTSC. But the box. The box says non-interlace RGBHV PAL version. So... Yeah, or, yeah, I don't know. The only other thing I could think of is that this is actually a VGA to S-Video downscaler. Um, you know what? We're here. Let's just try that. Let me get this other stuff out of the way. So, I think you might appreciate the fun little device I use in order to test that, too. Uh, so... Mm. My wife always laughs at me because I always get really excited when new cables show up. And she's like, do you really use each one of the 1,000 cables that you have? And I'm like, yep. And stuff like this is the perfect example. I bought this by accident like four years ago. And was like, you know what? I bet you I'm going to use it at one point. And I, I use it like twice a year. All right. This, uh, this Xtron thing, these RGB interfaces are really great for um, anybody that has Dreamcast sync issues or just for going from RGBHV to RGBS or, or anything in between. Uh, they could even deal with sync on green, although there is really no reason to do that in the gaming world. Um, the only reason would be if you have a full SCART setup and you want to throw you want to throw that into your PS2 into it in all resolutions. Um, but even then, you would just get, if that's what you insisted on doing, you would grab the latest edition G-SCART switch and never have to think about it because it auto automatically does that conversion for you. Um, all right. Done with this. Done with this. So let's grab the Time Sleuth. Let's grab this HDMI to VGA converter and then can go from this 
directly back into that box. And I have this set up for 240p, 480i, 480p. So now let's see if it's a downscaler. Uh, I think we left off on S video, so I'm gonna just leave that plugged in so we don't have to mess with the uh, retro tank. Oh, and I put the converters away already. Clean up a little too fast. Uh, this one, Andy Yo wants to know, this one's actually a shiny bow, so. Uh, five of these. No, this would be the other kind. Uh, I actually do need another cable. Well, it's way longer than we need, but it's uh, it's probably going to be faster than hunting down the shorter version. Uh, rectangle one wants to know about a scart switch. I didn't see a link pop up. I do, um, I do censor some kind of links, whatever the YouTube settings are. So people can't just post random links in there, but that's, that's YouTube's thing. They don't want, uh, cause creators are responsible for links that pop up in their streams and in their, in their videos. So it's most people just turn off all links nowadays, unless you're like a approved, um, person on the channel or something. All right. Uh, all I need is power from the time sleuth. I actually don't have any U. Oh no, I do have a USB port three. All right. I'm gonna switch this over to the other view and let's see what happens. All right. All right. This is uh, 480i is working. There's no colors with this, though, so we can't really tell. All right. 240p is working here. Uh, Mumu, it's that the time sleuth is providing the power to that VGA converter and the time sleuth itself is powered and the VGA converter uses such little power that's why it's able to do so. You're not really supposed to power stuff off of HDMI but it seems to work. So this could be the exact same thing that we've seen before in that it's just the colors that get it all messed up. All right, I will switch back. My camera's not working anymore for, all right, camera's back. Um, Sometimes the cam link just does that. So <coughs> this thing seems like it has potential, but the fact that it lost, um, the fact that it, it just kind of desynced like that makes me think that we could probably spend a really long time testing this and it's just gonna end up being the exact same. And you know, here's another example, right? Here's the Linux Bot 3000 one. RGB in to S video in works perfect, but composite can sometimes have weird color issues and stuff like that. So, all right. Well, that was the least interesting of the two. The other one's way more interesting. Um, so I'm kind of kind of glad we just got this over with first, mostly to test out the stream and everything as well. Um, and Joshi, uh, figure or SCA 101, I. Yeah, I think that's the one I'm about to go grab. So um, hold your horses there for a minute. All right. I'm probably going to put all this stuff away again just to find out I need more BNC connectors. But you know what? I don't want to lose anything. Put that back 
people. I'm not going to fumble with this on camera again. I embarrassed myself and over that before. But don't worry, I'm not going to throw it out or anything like that. I don't waste stuff like that. All right, here's the fun one. Here's the device from Sony. Um, the full background with this, check out Lewis's video on it. Um, if you just uh, if you just go to retro RGB and type in Zezeron, Z-E-Z-R-A-N, um, you'll be able to find the video where we talked about it and it links to his video. Uh, this is model YR421. And this is should be the opposite of the uh, the other one. This should be S video in to RGB out, but I believe it's JP21. So we're going to need something. All right, so we're obviously going to need an S video cable. Those retro access 3D printed adapters are pretty snug. Uh, Ashton usually, when it, whenever he sends me stuff, he sends me a box of really awesome cables with it. And I try to keep it together. I don't know why, you know, as if S video cables and the switch are, you know, one and the same. Uh, but I should probably just add them to my bin because they're really handy. But yeah, this beautiful behemoth. Um, this switch, check out the SCART switch shootout video I did. But basically, this has two main uses. Number one, if you're a beginner, the best use for this is just choosing between uh, JP21 and SCART. And then you can just use it as a basic switch. If you're a little bit more advanced, you could... Uh, you could use a whole bunch of different things, you know, RGB gain control if you're doing long runs, uh, horizontal and vertical, um, position adjust. It's very cool. I definitely like it. So, before I connect the output of this, I'm going to plug this in and see if it detects anything. Power. All right, and I do realize that you're not supposed to mix voltage from Japan, but from somebody somebody listed a, a sticker on here, only red. I bet you they, they're just plugging into Euroscart, uh, but I think we're good. All right, so that already sh uh, has the light lit up. I don't know if it's probably not coming out um, with this crappy webcam, but the SCA-101 already detected that it's the JP-21 and not Euroscart, so that's pretty awesome. Um, That's interesting. I really like that. That's a cool feature. Um, now let's take. I don't think we need the S video and composite cables anymore because now we're just doing output. All right. Get these up out of the way. You know, respectfully, I'm not trying to bust anybody's chops, but a couple people in the chat have already made jokes about, like, cheap Chinese clones. And I just always like to make sure that I'm very clear about there's a lot of amazing stuff that comes out of China. And, oh, by the way, there's also cheap, crappy clones. But I think there's become kind of a stigma where people think that everything that comes out of China without a name brand on it is junk. And that's just not true at all. I think, you know, Ashen's a testament to that. I really like his stuff. Not ev all of his stuff is for everybody, but whatever. Doesn't mean there's anything wrong with it. Okay, so I still have the Super Nintendo going into this box. It's powered. It's going at the SCA-101 switch that's showing that it is um, uh, JP-21. And I'm just... The easiest thing for me is to connect the Euroscart output. But, you know, I'm going to... 
<laughs> I'm gonna be a little cautious, and before I plug this directly into my brand new RetroTINK 5X, I'm gonna plug it into my monitor that can accept a much wider range of voltage than SCART equipment can, uh, and something that I could fix if it breaks. So let's, uh, yeah, I gotta take my audio interface out and rest it on top of my oscilloscope for this to work. And that does seem to be working. The colors are a little muted, but I feel confident that we could probably plug this into the retro tank and have it work. So, uh, you know, I think I'm going <laughs> to, yeah, all right. Let's, you know, I'm being paranoid, but I'm going to turn that back on and turn on the oscilloscope. And I want to check the voltage before I blindly plug this into my brand new Tink 5X. Um, I will drop captures here as well, scope captures, just so you all can see what I'm looking at. If I had a different setup, I would put a camera on the Rigel. And, you know, a question for everybody, I should probably put this out on Twitter, but the Rigel software mostly stinks a lot. So if anybody out there knows any, oh, here comes the sirens, sorry. If anybody knows of any kind of software that could be used in order to just um, separate, uh, so you could like have a, a, a video capture of the screen so I could show a live video. But all right, let's see. So, oh, come on. I can't, you know, most of the cops that do that whoop whoop thing are the little mini cars, the ones that are like just a two person and they don't just turn on the siren. They got to whoop whoop because no one pays attention to that car that weighs less than I do unless you act like a total obnoxious ass with it. Um, but on the sync line, it looks like it looks like there's green as well as a, a sync line. So I, I, I remember distinctly that um, Lewis was talking about something like this. So let me. No, I don't know what that is. So let me do the capture and let me, uh, yeah, there we go. Let me do the capture and then let me show everybody. Uh, Pander LOL, uh, seems to be trolling the chat wants to know why people are obsessed with getting a sharp picture. I don't know, man. Why are people obsessed with listening to music through good headphones? There's no right answer. It's whatever, uh, whatever you feel like. Um, oh yeah. My keyboard's up here now. So. All right, so here's what the sync line looks like. I'm going to see if I could double this as well. Um, all right. So that's kind of interesting. Um, it's definitely safe to plug in because there's, uh, there's only 300 millivolts on the sync line. I'm pointing on the screen with my cursor as if you could see it. I'm sorry. The, where I have the two horizontal lines drawn across is is what a sync line would normally look like and that color step uh, is other information on that so i'm kind of curious to see what the other colors do i'm going to um all right let me switch over to blue oh that looks all messed up Uh, okay. Blue. Oh, Destiny's here. What's up, dude? So, 
So here's what blue looks like. Hopefully it'll stay doubled. Yeah. So that's weird. Um, I can't really explain that. I wish uh, Voltar or TN or, or Tech or somebody was in the chat with me trying to explain that. Um, there's sharpness controls on the back that I'm messing with now. That's not doing anything. Um, brightness, that's not doing anything. There are color settings. That is kind of changing it, and it is definitely making the color look better on screen. I'll wait till I have it plugged into the retro tank for that. Uh, same thing with hue and the picture setting. I don't really get that either. So that's strange. Let me just keep going through the colors. Um, okay, this looks more normal, but still very, very odd. This is weird. I, I've, I'm not an expert at analyzing scope signals, not even remotely close, but I'm, I still test things probably three or four times a week. <laughs> Chris Fratz, thank you for the super chat. Much appreciated. He said, uh, Pander LOL was just joking. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm half joking too. Uh, I'm sure, I'm sure they were just joking, but I do get, I get that every day in the comments every day, all day. It's very strange. So if you're just joking, that's cool. I like a good tease, but wanted to clarify that for people wondering. So that's green. Never seen green look like that from an RGB output ever. Yeah, Destiny, if only people could see the behind the scenes of the podcast. Seriously, you've seen some of the crazy shit I got set up over here. Uh, all right. Yeah, I'm going to do red again just, just to show everybody, but this is weird uh rick todd says they don't really get why some people like fake scan lines because you don't really see scan lines on a real crt depends on the crt depends on the size of the crt and i guess the mask would be you know shadow mask for aperture grill or something uh, but I don't like them because I could always tell the whole mask, the horizontal scan lines and the vertical mask. I sometimes refer to them as vertical scan lines. That doesn't exist. I feel stupid after I say it, but it is a good visual cue in your mind, but it's, it's not a thing. Um, so that's red. Uh, so this is strange, but the good news is it shouldn't, um, it shouldn't harm anything that I throw at it. Let me just test the total voltage one last time here. Yeah, nothing, this is not going to short anything out. So uh, let me turn off my scope so you don't hear that loud fan in the background. Put my audio interface back on top of the scope because we don't have room to do everything. <laughs> let me get rid of that image. Okay. that into the retro tank if this thing starts smoking i'm gonna be pissed oh, i'm kidding it's fine i just checked the voltage all right let me switch it over so you see what i see. Uh... okay so that is mostly what i was seeing on my monitor here um, once again, I'm just, I tested on the monitor first cause I did not want to fry my new retro tank and I'm really glad we took a look at it on the scope. That wasn't just the very basic lines that you normally see. Um, that was strange. So let me mess with the color knob now, color and hue. If tech were watching, he'd be able to tell me exactly where to start and stop to get it pretty perfect. Um, I'm really bad at eyeballing this. I would I would normally just rely on the scope, but none of the things are lining up in the scope the way I had thought. Um, so sharpness. That is pretty interesting. Soft, sharp. You can see the color banding when you go totally sharp as well. Like look at the uh, magenta. That's this is totally sharp, and now this is totally soft. Uh, Mumu, yeah, I know. I'm sorry. The audio cuts off when I switch scenes um, be, or switch scene collections in OBS. I'm not great at it. I've watched a whole bunch of Epos Vox videos, and he's so good at that, and I still don't quite get how some of this stuff works. So this is brightness. All right. And then the only other thing is picture. I don't know what that knob does. 
And each of these knobs have that like analog click in the middle so that you know what you're, you're at the exact middle point, except for color and, uh, and hue. I don't know why. So that's pretty interesting. Um, Uber Disco wanted to know if component to S video was possible. Well, that is a long extension of this video because I, I now, now that we kind of did a whole thing and we know that this works, um, what I would really like to do, sorry if I cut off again, what I would really like to do is open this up and see why this works. Because um, there's a good chance that the chips used inside there just do S video to RGB conversion. So you might be able to use that for other things. Now, component to S video, downstepping like that. Um, I mean, you could you could grab a Linux bot 3000 converter like this and then just get the SCART input one and then use the RGB to comp or, or the, yeah, comp to RGB. So it's component in, convert it to RGB, it would go into this and then you could get S video or composite out. I'm 99% sure that'll work. Let me, uh, Give me a second. I think I could find the, most of those things. All right. So what you would want to do is get a SCART coupler, get a comp to RGB, and then get the SCART version of the Linux bot converter. And then you would essentially have component video in to S video out. Composite wouldn't work, but uh, S video would. Or of course, you could just talk to Linux Bot 3000 on eBay and see if you could just make you a direct component to S video converter. But this, I haven't tried it. And anytime you convert analog signals multiple times, it may or may not work, but that would be your best bet. It's a good thing I have a small apartment so I could just reach over and grab all this stuff. All right, so move the retro tank out of the way. I'm tangled. So this is actually the first time I have ever fed the SCA 101 a JP 101 uh, a JP 21 signal, and that did really well. I'm I'm very pleased with that. Uh, so we don't need this anymore though, but we could scope these individual signals coming out, going in. So that's, that might be something to check real quick. And this is the type of boring nerd stuff where it's like, I lose sleep over to be honest. Like I, if I did, a, if I were doing a review of this, if this was like a product from a retro gaming company and I forgot to plug it directly into the scope, and just went through the switch, I would wake up the next day and go, oh my God, did I just do a bad review of that? And you know, what's that mean? And you know, all right, how are we gonna do this though? Because the JP21 pinout isn't going to go right into my adapter thingy. This is the uh, QWERTY Moto adapter that is super helpful. Uh, I have this plugged directly into my scope. Uh, I guess we could just probe the pins. My pro I, I don't like the probes that came with the Rigels though. I mean, you get a lot for your money with these scopes, but at the same time, the probes are kind of junk, um, and uh, I don't like the software. I, like I was saying before, I really want a live view so I could do live streams or captures where you could see exactly what's going on in my scope screen. Um, and they have something sort of like that, but it crashes the computer all the time. And yes, I've tried multiple computers and all that. All right, let's put that there, get our probe. Blog wants to know if the retro RGB office will make a comeback. Uh, right before the entire world locked down, um, we were very seriously talking about open up the RGB castle. Um, we were, we've been talking about that for a long time and we were gonna make it happen. And then when the world first started to shut down, we're like, okay, maybe this means we can get cheap rent soon. You know, things should be back to normal in like six, eight months. And I think everybody just completely and totally gave up. So um, there's not going to be a load on this. So the voltages are gonna be much higher and things might be a little weird, but overall, it's still going to be, uh, it, I'm still gonna see if the, 
everything's all over the place like it just was before. I'm not really getting anything. Is this still powered on? Yeah, it's still powered on. I'm just going to keep touching stuff <laughs> until something smokes, shorts out, or I get a signal. Okay. I'm getting pretty much the exact same thing that you, I showed you all before. It's slightly different, but it's equally as weird. So none of these look like I would ever expect from a video signal. They almost look more like, like bad component video signals. So uh, let's take this sucker apart then. Let me unplug it first. Always important. <laughs> I just moved all my audio stuff around. Let me know if I knock something out, please. <laughs> I'm like a mad scientist. Yeah, this is kind of what goes on in my apartment from about, depending on the day, between 5 and 7 a.m. to, uh, to I just can't do it anymore and kind of pass out. Yesterday I was up early. I couldn't sleep. I have no idea why. So I just got up at like 5 a.m. and just started doing weird stuff like this. I almost streamed this then, figuring, hey, there's people up in the UK or something. And then around 6 o'clock, I got like I hit a wall and I was like, holy crap, I got to sit down. And at like 6.45 went out and I'm like, all right, I got energy again. And then I did video captures for like another two hours to try to test an idea I had. The idea worked and it may or may not have been sent to a developer you all know for a future update. And that's the other reason why I can't do live streams that often, because I can't talk about stuff that isn't official yet. Okay. This is... Let me see if I can get that somewhat in focus. Hey, what's up, Shank Mods? All right. <laughs> Alucard, what isn't official yet? Oh, nice try. Nice try. <laughs> All right. So I think the main thing that's running this in here is this Sony CXA1012A is an Apple. It says Sony 8C11, 8 Charlie 11, and then CXA, like the standard CXA encoder, 1012 Apple. Uh, anybody, anybody who knows how to look up um, data sheets want to fire that up and see what it says for that? Um, and I think what I'm going to do is just probe all of the pins on this to see if we can get any kind of signal and see what it's doing because what Lewis was talking about in his video is that for some reason this probably outputs sync on green uh, but what we couldn't figure out if it only outputted sync on green or if it outputted everything else as well uh, and we very obviously saw sync on the sync line so um, yeah I, I think there's I what I'm hoping is that this chip just does like S video or possibly even composite to RGB conversions. Uh, and the rest of the circuitry with these pots on here are tweaked to get whatever craziness that Sony needed back then. Cause these were really designed for people who had like um, a Sony Betamax player or, you know, a Sony laser disc player or something that um, outputted S video, but you're going to a Sony production monitor, like, you know, a production PVM or a, uh, a projector even that only accepted RGB. So that's why this converter exists. It doesn't make S-Video and Composite look like RGB, but that's the same exact reason we would need it in the retro gaming world, where it's like, I have seven SCART consoles, RGB SCART, and one S-Video, and I'm trying to run them all through my G-SCART. Can I just buy something that could do this? Um, so, uh, Shank, the, uh, it is, I'm going to repeat it one more time. I know there's a big delay, so you probably, you know what? Actually, let me type it in. I got my keyboard here. 
Hopefully I don't hit stop streaming or something. <laughs> All right. Sony. ABC 11. CXA. There you go. And I'm also going to try to snap a picture of that real quick. Um, I'll put this up on the screen as well while I'm messing around just for anybody who knows about circuits that just wants to take a look. This isn't going to be, I'll get a much more detailed shot that if I end up doing a post on this, um, you'll actually be able to see the, um, you know, in detail the circuit. I like using a macro lens for that. And it's funny because when you use a macro lens, the writing on the circuit board is perfectly, and the writing and the traces are perfectly in view, but the components kind of aren't because it zooms so perfectly to that one spot. So it's kind of weird. It looks out of focus, but it actually isn't. So love that dad style hunt and peck typing. You try typing when you have a desk full of stuff like this. It's not as easy as it looks, my friend. <laughs> um, let's see how this came out yeah that should be good enough for you to be able to get a basic what this is like so image all right i'll take everybody around this kind of slowly so that's the main chip right there i'm assuming because it's the biggest chip it's the one with the sony label on it um back here you have obviously some of the power stuff uh and i'll i'll zoom out i just wanted to give everybody a really close look first but that's where it looks like all of the processing for the video encoder comes in that's the only other chip on there all right so let me um sorry i'm gonna make everybody dizzy doing this but let me zoom it down this way I'll just make it smaller to all right that's the whole picture in view um, I'm gonna just hook things up on my scope and start hunting around for this because of the way the scope set up I can't show you until I do a screenshot so I might as well leave that up on screen for a few minutes so you all could, uh, could get it John D why weren't there laser disc players with SCART RGB S video or component connectors uh, there were and it was encoded in composite, but there were many times where you'd end up getting a sharper picture with S video only because as soon as the composite video comes out of the laser disc player or out of the laser discs, you know, being when it's being read, right away you convert it to S video as opposed to, you know, having it be composite video going down a long cable. Now you have S video separated colors and, and sync and everything. So you would actually technically get a sharper image, but not, not really. Um, but I mean, it was the same thing with, uh, um, oh, you know what? Uh, I think shank mods tried to, uh, post a link and it was probably auto deleted. Shank, could you please try posting that again? I just, uh, allowed you to or change the chat to let you post links. But yeah, it's same thing with VCRs. You can get um, ones with S video output, even though your uh, tape is still encoded in composite, it would actually look sharper because there isn't as much interference overall. I'm trying to find a connector just so I could easily clip onto ground. I think I have like 10 of them. <laughs> this is the other thing when you don't have enough space, you have to jam everything into tiny, tiny little drawers. Uh, oh, there's a HDMI extender. That was back from when I bought extras for the Warrior 64 project. That was hilarious. I know I have chopped up wires in here. I know because I, I do use them on a regular basis. Hmm. That might work. I, uh, I'm really sorry, Shank. I just, I gave you admin, but it's not posting the links. Um, 
I don't know what the heck. I'm not a YouTube expert here, unfortunately, so I don't know what's wrong. I thought once I made you admin, that would just work. Let me hit you up on Twitter or Discord or something and see if you could send it to me. Um, there we go. Sorry about that. Hey, what's up, Nelson? Glad to see, glad to see your comments are coming through. <laughs> Try one more place. Yeah, I don't know what's up with that. So I am just going to strip off one of these so I could use this to connect to ground so I could just put my clip on it and I don't have to worry. So. Oh, okay. Got everything from Shank, putting it in the chat right now. Oh, I'm already liking this pinout. Oh, that's going to help a lot. Thank you. So I could already see up at the top R, G, and B out up there. So we should be able to see. And there is a separate sync out. So when I probe it, I should be able to see exactly what's up with that then. That's very cool. Okay. Let me... Um Let me finish with this. So all I'm doing here is taking... What essentially is the same as just an RCA cable, um, but it's a BNC, and stripping it off. I'm not even going to strip the signal. I just need the ground, because that's what I'm going to put my probe clip on, so I don't have to worry. But obviously, this is not going to go in RCA, so I got to get one of those connectors again. Knew I shouldn't have put those away. So that's going to allow me to just clip this right here. So that's ground. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me uh... I'm on water with one of those hydration tablets in it. But after this, I might, uh, I might just switch to beer. All right. Um, now, I'm once again not even close to an expert at scopes, but uh, Steve taught me a lot. And I'm using this on a pin that has the trigger set. Um, and I should be able to get this done for at least one still shot to show you. Um, J time, no, no sync on green with the, um, uh, with the retro tink five X, but you really don't need it. Cause the only console in retro gaming that needs it is PlayStation two. And if you just get, um, just standard, uh, component video cables, like good ones, not crappy knockoffs, but if you get the HD retrovisions, that's uh, equal to or better than RGB. Uh, better than only just because of the encoder. It's not, you know, the compo or component in RGB, there isn't one that's better than the other or something. So it says pin 32 is sync, but that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight from the left. So. I'm not quite getting anything. Oh, I just did. Uh, you know what? I don't have my voltage set correctly. 
um, because there's no 75 ohm termination. Um, let me change that over here. Oh yeah, I had it set to 200 millivolts because I was testing something else before, so it wasn't even showing up on screen. Okay, let me. Uh... I guess the one thing I could do if this starts to get weird is solder a wire to each of these four lines, but I don't think I need to. I think once I get my groove in and I just find the right settings, I should be able to just hold this down and then press the button to save it. Also, these probes, this is what I was complaining about before. Um, it's very common that these the ends on these probes don't get a reading. Which is weird because I'm touching it with my finger and it's doing something, but there's been many times that I'm holding this on a piece of metal and I'm scraping it back and forth and I'm not getting any reading, and then all of a sudden the reading pops up. Um, you know, I guess Steve bought the uh, the more expensive scope, so he never. <laughs> I think his might be a different model number too, so maybe I just need to upgrade or something. Do you hear that? I touched the power thing, zapped myself a little. What an ass. I'm always telling people be careful with open frame power. I'm used to it though. I've been <laughs> You know I just realized. Seriously? What an ass. Sorry. Could not figure out why I wasn't getting a signal. Well, you have to have something plugged in to get a signal coming out. That's embarrassing. How many people are watching? 192 people just watched me do that. What a complete and total moron. Um, check, uh, I kind of talked about it before, but basically this is um, a Japanese box that is S-Video in to JP21 RGB out, just for the purpose of people who have things like um, a beta mask uh, or you know some kind of s video player made by Sony that they want to interface into their professional video monitor or something like um, like a projector so Sony made this just to do that but I'm trying to figure out why all of the scope outputs on this look so strange and I know that one of the features that was advertised was sync on green but this looks way different than just sync on green so the goal would be to uh, to kind of figure out is the chip just converting S video to comp um, to RGB and nothing else. And the rest of this circuit is for that weird sync mixing. And if so, can we just find a bunch of these chips and make our own S video to RGB converters simply for people that have like a Commodore 64 or an S video modded Atari 2600 that they want to include with the rest of their setup. So this is more just like a fun nerd experiment. Volts. So it's eight from the right. One, two, three. So it should be this pin. Yeah, that doesn't look that looks very odd. That doesn't look like sync at all. So let me try the video voltages. Uh, those are like right in the middle. Yeah, exactly, Shank. Just figuring out what the extra crap is. So I think what I need, I think one of the reasons I'm getting a weird reading is you're supposed to have 75 ohms of termination. Um, I wonder, uh, I wonder if I could terminate this side and not have to worry about that. Where's my action switch? All right, so let's just terminate this. Am I still on up here? And
That might do it. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just gonna get all the wires we run around here. Okay. Move this out of the way. Yeah, exactly. If the chip is raw RGB out, we could find old stock laying around somewhere used and pulled from components and then just build a tiny little box. Actually, we could probably build something that looks exactly like the SCART converter. It's just got S-Video and um, uh, both you know left and right audio on one side and SCART on the other. Okay. Repower back on again. JP21 lights coming on. Let me check again. One, two. I'm getting something. Uh, and the termination into the switch definitely has helped stabilize it. That's for sure. So I'm leaving it in. All right. Uh, let me just double check. Probes. Uh, I'll set the probe to 10 and match this. One thing that I usually end up doing when I, I use probes is I leave them at 1x um, because all of my plugins are just basic, you know, uh, basic RCA stuff. And I always end up forgetting to put it back. So I'll, you know, I'll probe something and then a week later I'll come back or a couple of days later, turn on my scope, plug in a console and be like, oh my God, why is this 10 volts? <laughs> and then I'll realize, oh yeah, I forgot it. But let me uh, try that. All right, I think I found sync. Let me, um... I'll take a screenshot for everybody too. All right, so it's looking like 2.7 volts, but that's fine because we're coming directly out of the chip, but it does sort of look like a sync signal. It's just got a curve on it because, um, oh, Shank got another, uh, another document. Cool. Putting that in the chat right now. All right. Yeah, that's a good one. I like that. All right, cool. Um, so let me get that. Let me get that back up on screen for everybody to see. Once again, sorry it's taken a while. It's just there's no live view for the scope. Um, I really wish there was. Even if it wasn't, even if it was just something I could see here and I could do a screen capture. Um, where? All right, so that's, um, ignore the voltage, that's just because the, this is direct off the chip, um, but that's pretty interesting to see. So I'm going to probe around, I guess I'll leave that up for a second, and I'll see if I can grab one of the video voltages and see what we see on that.
Get an extra point, camera point at the scope. Yeah, Shank, if you saw my setup, <laughs> you, uh, whenever I move, yes, that'll absolutely be it, but definitely not at the moment. Interesting. I'm just kind of probing every pin, and what I see is, like, I saw kind of a video voltage on... Let me do this again just to see... So on pin, f uh, what was it? Pin 29. All right. So the video, uh, video in that makes sense. Okay. Um, off and back on again i just touched two pins together so rgb out i'm not really getting anything i don't know why and it could be the voltage setting it could be a whole bunch of different stuff let me keep trying though um i'll uh i'll move the image out of the way so that way if i'm doing something crazy you could all laugh at me Slipped and touched two pins. Power it off. Power it back on. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't really get it. Um, uh, the pins that are marked RGB out, I'm basically just getting a straight line with no video. And I should be getting something. I mean, I guess it could be upside down, but we got sync on that pin. That was definitely sync. So I'm just reading up the, the sheet now. The um, I posted in the chat for anybody that wants to just look at the pin out, but... Hey, Keemstar dropped in. What's up, man? Yeah, it says pin 37, 38, and 39 are R, G, and B out, or B, G, and R out in that order. So when I'm touching the probe to that, I should see something very similar to what I showed before with sync out because I'm showing color bars now. Actually, let me just, you know what? Maybe I'm not. Let me double check. Maybe I pressed the wrong button or something, but let me throw S video back into the tink. Ha, ah, luckily the probe had his plastic on, so I didn't accidentally stab anything in there. And let me just switch over to the other view. All right, so we're still getting color bars coming out here. I didn't like accidentally power off the Super Nintendo. So we should definitely then be getting signal on those output pins, even though there's not the rest of the, uh, the signal available or the circuit available, we should see something. My guess would have been that we would have seen a standard um, RGB signal coming off with a, the stepping up voltages, just uh, bigger because there's no termination. You need to hire someone to recap your laser actives. Those are a giant pain uh, reach out to Voltar, though. Um, he sometimes doesn't like doing uh, custom work like that, but who knows? I do think that would make a good video, though, or a good live stream, at least, because those laser actives are pretty rare and pretty interesting, and I think people would really enjoy just kind of seeing the guts of one and especially how many caps it takes to, uh, to fix them. Can you use the meter to check those lines to ground? See if they have 75 ohm. That's a good idea. I am going to turn the power off to do that, though. So let me check the resistance on them. Uh, I'll just touch a resistance. 
adjuster to make sure my thing's set up correctly. Okay, so uh, let me grab up the data sheet again. All right, so it's 10 from the side. Uh, I think I have my meter set wrong. That showed 2.2. .2. Turn my meter off and back on. Maybe my batteries are dying or something. I'm getting a weird, uh, weird stuff with that. <laughs> Keemstar, so you're saying you want the job? No, I'm not. Um, my modding's good enough that I'm not embarrassed to show it. But that's as far as I'll go. I think if somebody's going to pay some money uh, to somebody to do to do work, it needs to be it needs to be quality. So if you wanted me to like. RGB mod a Super Nintendo, I could do that pretty banging. I could make that look just as good as everybody else in the world. But recapping a rare and expensive and kind of complicated device, I would do it for me, but I wouldn't do it for anybody else. Hey, speaking of the man, Voltar just jumped in. So like we were saying before, if you may want to make sure to never use Voltar because he's the worst. You know, he actually uses my hands in his videos because he can't do any of the work himself. No, I'm kidding. Zach's my friend. I just, we love teasing each other. Zach, this crappy multimeter you told me to buy isn't working right. It's beeping and I'm not even touching anything. You all hearing that? All right. I have a backup. Let me find my backup. This multimeter is older than probably some of the people in the chat here. <laughs> And all kidding, that, all kidding aside, that multimeter was $8, and it worked perfectly for a few years. So you know what? If I got to buy a new $8 multimeter every four years, I'd rather do that than buy a $100 one. All right. So probably set it there. Oh, of course, the battery is dead on this. I've been trying to get Bob to lick the live side of the transformer. Funny you say that, man. When I, when I was working for a company that designed medical grade computers, I had to set a rule that no no open frame power supply soldering before 10 a.m. because of all the times I would come into the office kind of hungover, had to be out with customers the night before, or sometimes just out partying myself. And I'd walk in and somebody would accidentally rest their hand on an open frame power supply. And, you know, it stings, but, you know, it doesn't, you know, jerk your hand right off but the smell of burning flesh i'd walk in and just be like i'd start to gag like, no more absolutely not let me grab a battery Well, that's messed up. No batteries. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, what do I have a 9 volt in that I could pull out of? Uh, I used to have a bunch of guitar pedals that would always have 9 volts in them, but those are all packed away because obviously I don't play live gigs anymore. Oh, <laughs> uh, man. 
What do I have with a nine volt? I guess maybe I could also try replacing the batteries in this one. If that's a nine volt too, I'm gonna laugh. Bob, just what in the hell are you doing here? Fair enough, Zach, because I actually really want your opinion on this. I tried bothering you before, but I know you were busy. Um, uh, so there's a device here that takes S-Video and converts it to RGB via JP21. But the signal that it outputs is really strange. And in fact, I will, I will drop, um, let me drop the scope chat, uh, the scope captures in the chat real quick with you, just so you could see what I'm looking at. But the signal is strange. So what I'm hoping to get from this is to figure out if the CXA 101 2A as an Apple chip is something that essentially just um, just converts S video to RGB, so we could then take this signal and then make or you know find a chip and then make our own S video to RGB converters for people that want to just put their Commodore 64 in their RGB setup. So what I'm dropping in your chat now, which everybody in this chat already saw, was sync red, green, blue in that order. And you're going to find out exactly why it's as weird as this. And if you want to jump in, I'll throw you on chat to, uh, to describe it if you want. Got an instrument with an active preamp that would probably have a 9-volt battery. Mm, I don't know, but I do have more AAAs uh, that I could replace in this. I don't know if I've ever replaced the batteries in that, so that might be solution. I hope I do. I just ordered a bunch of double A's. Toss that back in. Got him. All right. goes the opposite oops so these scope plots that i just sent you that everybody else saw before are specifically from the output uh, so that is the what the jp21 output converted to regular euroscart so i'm essentially just tapping the red green and blue pins under load um under 75 ohm termination that's what you're seeing so that is the red the sync red green and blue lines in that order 75 ohm terminated that's coming out of this SCART cable that's coming out of this device. And uh, Shank Mods put links to the pinouts in the descri uh, description. Or I guess he sent them to me and I put them in. And the device itself is a Sony YR421. And you missed the whole part where I couldn't get a video signal because I didn't plug in the video. That was embarrassing. Still powered off, right? Off, okay. Yeah, I think it is 75 ohms. Yeah, I believe that is. Zach, do you want to just jump on here? I'll explain it to you. You seem to not be following. Would you like to come on so I could explain to you how this works technically? 
Um, all right, let me, everything's plugged in. <laughs> Clay, right as I talked about needing batteries, the wireless mouse died. Yeah, it happens. Let me throw this diagram in there for you too, Zach, if you want to take a look. Tell me if there's anything else I should be probing. <laughs> so there's another big connector up here that I should probably be be testing just to see because that, that's the output cable that goes to the uh, JP21, so I could try to trace it back from that. Um, still on, right? Nope, off. Okay. I'm basically now just touching any of the components very carefully, but um, the ones that are sort of around where the output line is, just to try to trace it backwards that way to see if I could find it. Um, let me... So I'm getting all the same readings that I did before um, off of the SCART connector. So there's nothing wrong, or the JP21 connector. So there's nothing wrong with that. So um, that's always good to determine, like, is there something in the chain that's changing this? Yeah, same exact weirdness as before. So as I go back, I should hopefully find the rest of these signals somewhere. I can just keep going. Uh, I think I did find the output signal and it looks the same. It, whatever encoding's being done, it looks like it's coming right out the chip like that. Uh, if you're still on here, Zach, let me know if there's anything you want me to take, um, like a, take a specific shot of based on what you saw before. He's probably already left. He's probably like, I'm not making any money from this. I'm out of here. But still, if you're here, because um, it looks like right off of the chip I'm getting these same weird signals which would mean the processing's done in the chip I'm going to very carefully try to move the trigger up Okay, whew, I got something. Oh, and I pressed the wrong button and cleared it. Damn it, all right. Um, let me read what that was. One, 
I just wanted to double check the pin out. The pin one matches what I'm seeing, and it does. So I'm just going to keep poking these pins and kind of go from there. Damn it, I slipped and knocked two of the pins, or shorted two of the pins together. Didn't seem to do harm, but still. I rebooted it just in case. All right, I see you, Zach. What's up? Once again, you failed in every way possible. Maybe the uh, the whole first uh, the whole first part I did okay, but I don't. I'm kind of at the end of my knowledge right here, where all I'm doing is probing the chip. So I would need your help, otherwise I'm pretty much going to call it for the day and maybe pull the chip itself. Uh, so yeah, let me know. Thanks, Monty. No, no, no bear slippers today. <laughs> oh, that's why I said I failed. I, I missed the call from him. Shit, hold on a second. Uh, start voice call. Hold on a minute, Zach. I got to plug these in so I can hear you. Oh, there you are. Can You, you can still hear me, right? Okay, I will. I will add you. I will add you to that. Uh, Just tell me when we're live. All right, we're live. But tell me uh, if everybody can still hear me, or if my audio is all. Oh, there still. you are. Can you? You can still hear. Say something, Zach. You're a fucking loser. I will add you. I will add you. All right. Uh, it's going to take a minute for the chat to catch up. We'll find out. Uh, while we're waiting, Morgan Tube HD wants to know about a pass through mode on the RetroTINK 5X. Uh, no, I called it out at the end. It's one of the only missing features, and it's not anything that could ever be added because of the way it's uh, set up. So if you need pass through, the M or the Pro would probably be best, depending on your inputs. We'll add you. So what we'll is it that you, you. want to move? All right. Uh, it's going to take a minute for the chat to catch up. We'll find out. Uh, while we're waiting, Morgan Tube right. HD. I think we're here. I think we're both here. So what? I, here's what I want from you, other than the things that I've been asking you for for the past five years, like the Neo Geo mod and help with my, you know, my BIOS and my PC. What I want from you today is just one quick thing. Uh, this chip right here, the Sony CXA 1012A. The only thing I want to determine is can this chip output basic RGBs or does it do all the weird color mixing for sync on green and all of the other information in that uh, in that chip? Because if that's the case, then there's no more reason to play with this. It's a neat device. I'll put it on my shelf. But if this chip could do clean S video to RGBS, we could try to find used versions of these chips and make ourselves an S video to uh, RGB converter for people that just want to integrate it in the setup. That's a CXA 101-2A, is that what you said? Correct, yes. Uh, I have data sheets here that Shank Mods found. Let me post those in for you. Yeah, post me a data sheet, and I'll take a look at it. Jesus. This is what I've got work to do. Yeah. Okay, but yeah, just, uh, yeah, just paste the uh, data sheet in here, and let's take a look at it. All right. Let's see exactly what we're doing. Got one... So this device that you're looking at, this is an RGB to... Uh, composite video and S video converting apparatus. Yeah. Uh, no, it's S okay. video to RGB only. That's it. Oh, okay. S video to RGB. Okay. All right. Let me take a look here. Yeah. Let me download this. 
All right, give me just a second here, Bob. I'm 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 downloading it. So we're. You know, it, I'm looking at the first page of this, and it's obvious this chip was initially designed to be used as a color decoder for probably Sony Trinitrons. I bet this chip is in a lot of Sony television sets. Could be. Uh, and just th now, the question is: the go final ahead. goal what? is to make the final goal is to make one of these. Uh, these are just a pass through, obviously, but to make something that looks like this, but that has that chip inside it to just do the S video conversion to RGBs. So what you want to know is, does this chip have the capabilities of doing the color space conversion of color? Well, it's actually, does this, does this chip have the, the facilities to do the video matrix conversion from like an encoded video format to an uh, analog RGB output? And is the analog RGB output buffered in such a way that it could easily be uh, terminated to a low impedance device, such as a television, or something of that effect? Right, right. Because with this device, I don't know if you saw the uh, the scope captures I threw in the chat, but that's what I'm getting off the RGBS lines. What's coming out of this main line, which is weird. I've never seen anything look like that. So it's it seems like it's coupling in sync on all of the color lines as well. What happened? What do you mean? Did you all, did you all hear that? He just said, "What happened?" And now he's. Oh, his headset died. Give him two seconds. I thought when he said what happened, I thought he meant me. I'm like, what do you mean what happened? I just told you what happened. <laughs> um, yeah, the, uh, uh, Notary? Notary? So sorry, I get all these names wrong. Uh, wants to know if there's another chip. There's a Toshiba chip in here too, but I don't think that does anything uh, related. You're back, Zach. Can you hear me? Terribly. It looks like you're on a 1990 cell phone, but continue. I am. That's just the nature of this, Bob. I want it to be. I want this to be authentic to the kind of content that you made, old and crappy quality. So let's just do it. Okay. <laughs> Such an ass. It's okay. okay I love I, it. I'm looking at this right now. Give me just a few minutes of silence here, and I'll tell you what I think. Which one are you looking at? So I could put it up in uh, in OBS for people to look at as well. Um, I'm looking at, well, I'm looking at the data sheet right now. I'm not really, I'm not stuck looking at anything. I'm looking at the outputs. Um, let's see. I'll, I'll be right with you, Bob. Just, this, 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 let's see. This, just shut up, Bob. I'll throw this in the chat again for, so people don't have to scroll back. Monty G, quick, get me and stick on the uh, Nick on the call too. Thank you, Monty. Appreciate the super chat very much. And while while we're all waiting for Voltar, maybe hit the thumbs up because uh, I always forget to tell people to do that. And I don't know no, if it actually Jesus. does anything, but you know, I'm, Jesus I was told if I want to be a real YouTuber, I have to say that. So there you go. I don't know. I listen. I've not made a YouTube video in a year. I couldn't tell you anything about it, even though I'm arguably a phenomena. But let me just see right here. It's so modest, pins, too. Pins 40 through 37 are the analog outputs. I'm going to look and see in the data sheet. For 37 through 40. Okay, let's see what sort of game they have. Uh, my The data sheet is 37, 38, 39, not 40. Sync is on uh, 32. Hold on. Oh, maybe I'll look at it. Let's see. 37, 38, and 39, and sync is on 32. Okay. Shut up, Bob. All right, let's see what we have here. Let's just take a look here. Um, this looks good. 50 to 60 hertz discrimination range. That looks absolutely fine. Um, now, I'm looking right here. It's so hard to sort of tell what these pins are. Um, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. I can't tell what's what. Oh, one. Oh, okay. I see. That's. Um, okay. Still looking. Still looking.
Here we go. Okay, this is what I need to see. Just take it easy, Bob. Uh, Bob, the, the, the outputs, if you go to, if you navigate to page, what page is this? Okay, the actual document page is 26 of 26. But of the PDF, uh, the, the carbon page is, I think it's 33. It's the last page. If you look at pins 37 through 39, I'm looking at the network here that drives them. Now, what you're looking at is you're basically looking at the DAC from the inside of the chip as it reaches the pin. Okay. It looks to me that these are driving. Let me just check something else real quick. Yeah, that looks good. That's 150. So there's, okay, so it looks like the schema for the video outputs are emitter followers, 150 to 24K. I think, Bob, that this out, these outputs could certainly work for high impedance. If you're wanting to uh, shape the video to drive an actual electron gun of a CRT, or it looks like you could shape this out with relative ease to drive a low impedance 75 ohm termination for a piece of consumer equipment with very little. Um, what I would need to see, I would like you to put various loads on any of the color outputs. So R, G, and B, any of these, it doesn't make any difference. If okay. you could put a 75 ohm load, if you could put like, um, I'd like to find a seven in here. So what you should probably do, Bob, is focus on taking the outputs. At 37 through 39, any of these pins will do just fine. I would like to see like 100 ohms, and I'd like to see I'd like to see 1K, and I would like to see 10K. If you have if you have those resistors, I'd like you to see. I'd like you to do pull ups and pull downs, and then with that data, we could sort of work out a feminine, and we could figure out how this is really supposed to be driven. Because a lot of this a lot of this data sheet I can't really read. Uh, maybe it's my monitor, but maybe it's just really crappy. But the point is. I think you could do exactly what you want to do with, 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 with some passive components on the outputs of this chip. Okay. Um, I'm a, so let me I don't think, this, I don't think this is a big deal. Okay. Um, so if you want, I could do the, that trick that I've been doing that Steve laughed, but said would work where I basically just take a 75 ohm resistor, clip my probe on it, and then have one to ground and then one to the signal. So I'm essentially putting it under a 75 ohm load with the scope. Yeah, that's fine. All right, let me grab that now. That'll look fine. And all we gotta do is basically just confirm that. And if that's the case, um, I could package this thing up and send this to somebody who feels like reverse engineering that and uh, going from there. Well, I don't understand. Like, so uh, just real quick, explain to me what this, so this device, it'll take in encoded video, PAL and TSC, maybe, I don't know if it'll do uh, C-CAM or not, but you'll, you, can, you can jam into it as video or composite, and on the output, it will give you an RGBS video line. Yes, except um, the signals that are on those RGB don't look normal. They don't look like you would find in, in normal equipment. But that's essentially what it was. Uh, it was basically just for people that were like, I have a Betamax player that I bought in 1985, and I want to hook it into my Sony Pro Series projector that only accepts RGB. It does not accept um, S-Video, so Sony made this. What, you know what would really help me is if you could uh, – what would be really effective is if you could look at the, the circuitry on the output pins of the device itself. Mm -hmm. See what's driving them. See what the – see how the – see how the uh, – the output stage is uh, the, how that's being constructed. Pins 37 through 39 on that device will basically tell you everything that you need to know. And if it doesn't look right, I wonder if that's because this is designed. I wonder if that's because is this designed for SCART RGB or is this designed is this designed for uh, is this designed for um, Pro RGBs? Uh, SCART RGB. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. And I'm sending you a picture right now. Send it to me. Send me all the pictures. Hold on. Let me 
take one more here. <sighs> okay, oh, perfect. All right, that's uh, that's sent. I found seventy-five ohm resistors in my sack of resistors. Oh, shank mods. Maybe the caps trimmers are bad. You know, um, that is a good idea. Nothing's leaking, but that doesn't mean that there's nothing wrong with the caps. So maybe that very weird signal that I'm getting on the output is exactly that. Maybe that's just bad caps. I mean, this thing was probably made in the mid '80s, so it's totally plausible. <laughs> Well, that's certainly possible. I mean, there's a lot of jitter there. That's for certain. Um, that's exactly the thing. Oh, look, it's all one layer too. How my how 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 Sony is this? Okay. <laughs> so let's see. That's pin one twenty five. I'm just counting. Uh, it's forty eight. Okay. Yeah, really, Bob. What I would need to see is a picture. Well, no, never mind. It's just too much. Too much to goddamn ask of you, you loser. Um, anyways, uh, let's see here. Um, <laughs> it would be good to see the bottom. Um, man, I, I understand. I, listen, I appreciate your your vigor and spirit. Of, but I got. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. I, I'm being dead serious. I'm not being an asshole today. Yeah, I am. Yeah. Actually, I'm. Why is it? Why are you wanting to harvest a thirty year old color converter? Chip. It's when we had chip, and totally fair question, uh, that are a fourth of the size and readily available, and basically do all of this color conversion internally, which means as opposed to having fifty components on a board to make it work, you've got three resistors and three caps to convert S video and and composite video into an analog RGB output. Because nobody's done it, and I'm just trying to figure out different ways to do it. Figure worst yeah, case. The, the, this is not what you want to do, Bob. I'm telling you right now. If you really wanted this, you should have talked to me. I could have, I could have at least pointed you in the right direction, so you could have had somebody do this. I, I'm dead serious about this. Is not, this is not the way. I, this is neat. This is a really neat device, but there's a much better way of doing this. With, 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 with. Yeah, I don't know. You know, the, the chip shortage right now. I just don't know. But analog devices, Bob. Remember that name, analog devices. They have a lot of. They have a lot of. Um, video amplifiers and video circuitry that's basically all on a chip that will do precisely what you want to do if you want to convert if you want to color convert this video and composite both in pal and ntsc to, to an analog rgb format there's a chip that'll do it and you need about six components that live outside of the chip to do it well so there's a problem with that uh the analog and devices so stuff the only thing left on the market that they still sell only converts to component video which is why the core you exists and as it is and not it is not an rgb converter so there's a real simple solution to that why don't you just color can why don't you just why don't you just the, i mean take the coefficients and just color convert color convert the uh component video to rgb and then you don't have to do anything. You can use that same part. That is a perfectly good solution, but you know what also would have been a good solution? If we found a stockpile of these chips somewhere, put four components on a board and stuck it in a SCART coupler type of thing. That was my theory on that, at least. This chip, Bob, do you... Let me kind of just let me explain this to you. Some. Look at the data sheet. This chip right here, Bob, do you know how much power this uses? Does it use a lot? Bob, this chip uses more power than what you do to fry a turkey every morning for breakfast. <laughs> I don't eat breakfast, motherfucker. I'm just saying, Bob, you're looking at a heat generating, power hungry, probably CMOS logic chip that was made in the early 1990s. I don't know, it might even be 1980. No, this is 80s. This is 80s. Okay, okay, so some old CMOS circuitry here. You're talking about something that's going to generate a lot of heat, it's not going to be power efficient, and you know what? It's probably not going to do nearly as good of a job as if you just take something that's new and make it work. Like, this is what the RetroTink does. The RetroTink 5X, the native color space language of that chip is an RGB. It's component. So how did Mike fix that? Well, he just color converted the SCART input to component, and it works beautifully. It's virtually lossless, and it's not difficult to do. 
yeah, totally understand. Just, just still an experiment I wanted to run. Um, yeah, yeah, I know how your experiments work, though, Bob. <laughs> Please, the people are smoking. The only other thing, though, since you're here and since this is a very real problem that people are a witness to, um, I my probes suck so much. I was getting a perfectly mm -hmm. good reading, and then okay. I, I hit the single button and this happens to be all the time with these probes hit the single button it was great i did a screenshot i was like oh you know what let me adjust the voltage and do another screenshot have not been able to get a signal since on the same probe and i just tried a different probe and it's the same thing and uh like a couple of years ago i talked to Steve about this and i was showing him on camera how sometimes i'd actually even though they're already plugged in i'd have to wiggle where the, it goes in and then I was just showing him, like, here, this was clipped on, and I'm wiggling this thing, and the signal's jumping. And he said, oh, you know, you should just call Rigel for that. But I just, I don't want them to send me out the same piece of crap probes. I want to, I, if they're expensive, fine. But I just, I want something that I could actually rely on. If I got to spend 50 bucks on probes, fine. But I don't want to dick around with this. I probably wasted 20 minutes of everybody's time poking around at pins because my probes didn't work. Bob, you know, there's a couple of things to that, I and mean, there's 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 there are, there are a couple of possible explanations for your probe problems. One, you know, you live in New York; those probes, and you probably do a lot of drugs in that apartment. Those probes probably have a nice thick film of methamphetamine, among other things. Um, what I would really suggest is isopropyl alcohol and a little uh, triple aught steel wool. I do this probably once every three or four weeks. Scuff up the uh scuff up the uh leads of your probes uh i do that probably honestly once a month because i suffer from the same problem and it's typical oxidation that can give you poor or an uh, unintelligible readings another thing that okay. you can do bob here's, here's a fun little thing if you're having tr if you're having to if you're having trouble maintaining a signal lock with your probes if you look at your scope in the top right hand the very top right hand there's a button it's called single. It's going to take a single snapshot and store it. Yeah. Use it. That's what I do use it, every Bob. time I use my screenshots. Jesus. Jesus, Bob. Yeah, I use that all the time. But okay, that's a good idea. That is actually exactly what yeah, I do. Honestly, just, just, just take some steel wool and scuff up. Honestly, just, just take some steel wool and scuff up the leaves of your probes. I, I have that problem too. And there's nothing you can do about that unless you – if you buy some some – some really, really expensive probes, and it, quite frankly, it's not worth it when a piece of steel will fix it. Okay. Fix you right up. Completely and totally an excellent answer. Thank you. So I guess that pretty much is it for this one, then. I, this really wasn't a... The stream had no point. I really just wanted to test some of this equipment um, and just kind of see. I also had another one from before when we first started that did RGBS and RGBHV to... Uh, to component or i mean to composite or s video but just like with a lot of these other ones it doesn't really work with um with video games only really with standard tv signals so this was neat this was fun i was kind of wondering if i should write a post on either of these but nope so uh you know so, you know something else Bob. I, I just thought of something else it would be really interesting if you examined the waveforms of the rgb outputs while all rgb outputs are under a load that's the, I don't know that's what, what I, I sent you. That's the exact thing that I sent you. Everything. Okay, so that's everything simultaneously being under load. Yeah, uh, you know, this is going to take two seconds, okay. so I'll show it again. But here's the SCA-101 switch. That's the Ashen switch that uh, works really well. Let me power this yep, back yep. on. Now, it automatically detects it as JP21, so I'm, I'm setting that correctly. Uh, then I'm grabbing a shielded SCART cable. Okay. And... Plugging it in. I'll, I'll plug it into the RetroTINK first so you can see what the uh, the video output looks like. This is just the uh, HD Rectal Vision software test suite. Output okay, color gotcha. Bars. That's um, an interesting looking smart switcher. Yeah, I like this one. Okay. Thank you. Dick. Um, okay. So, I don't even know which one you're referencing, my friend. All right. Power off. 
All right, so uh, you can see that now. It's pretty decent. Um, it now you could mess with the color settings and all this stuff. It, you know, you could take a minute to do that, but um, but it's good enough for our purposes. Now I'm just going to plug that into the scope uh, with that um, the RG bench thing, that 75 ohm load termination thing that uh, Cordy Moto made that I've tested a million times before. It's pretty damn reliable for me. Um, just gonna plug this back in, set my probe uh, setting on the scope back to 1x. I was telling everybody before how all the time I'll, I'll use the probe and then go back to using the RCA connectors and all of a sudden go, oh my god, why, why is this so off? And then it's not off, it's just the probe. Right. Yeah. Um, no, I didn't. <laughs> no, um, here, let me, uh, it's fine. I don't know. If oh, I'm, oh, if I'm oh, looking. when I switch scenes, when I switch scenes, that's right. Oh, and Kyosha just said the same thing. Yeah. Sorry. I did cut, I did cut you off when you were talking about the investigation. That is. That is pretty funny. Do you think the next time I'm on the Geraldo Rivera show that I will be discussing this conspiracy? Okay, I don't know. Tell me when you tell me when people can hear me again, and I'll tell you my answer. Never. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm weirdly not getting a setting on my uh, sync line now. Um, let me. Oh really? The, yeah. Let me power the scope off and back on again. It's only gonna take a second. Now, Bob, just to make sure you 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 have the coupling set correctly on your scope, right? Yeah. Uh, um. Yes. Okay. Not not set to. Okay. So you've got AC and DC figured out. Okay. 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 Yeah. No, it's fair. I. It just. I. This was all working right before, so I, I just. Figured. I know, but sometimes you might or you might have missed with the trigger or something. I do that stuff all the time, yeah. and I'm like, why well, doesn't it work? Yeah. Oh no! People are really upset that you've cut me off. Oh. They, they hear you? Are they hearing me? Okay, good. I, Bob cut me off, guys. I'm sorry. I asked about the horse investigation, and I also asked about the InfoWars merger that Bob has been trying to keep <laughs> under wraps for three months. I was, I was made abreast of it about two months ago, about how he's selling to Alex Jones, or he's going to be working for Alex Jones. All right. So my, 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 go, ahead, um, go ahead. My, let me just make sure everything's plugged in solid. So right here, right, um, number four on the scope, I'm not getting mm -hmm. anything. I'm set to 500 millivolts, um, 10, 10 US for time, and I'm not seeing anything. Um, let me move, move, change the vertical position. Maybe it's very deeper. Maybe it's too high. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I'm. Uh, I when I switched it over to channel three, I do see something. So you're right. It's okay. Maybe, when I was messing around before, that might have been towards the end when I was just getting desperate and twisting dials, that might have been it. So vertical position. Yep, see if you've there just buried it. I do There we yep. go. Yep. yep, what I tell you, I'm not even there. I'm still here with you, you know, sexually. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'll measure. You don't need the voltage measurement for this, right? We're just looking at the um, the signal itself. Oh, no, I don't need you to do a, you, do I need a cursor? Do I need a cursor measurement? No, 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 no. That's not important. I just want to see how jittery it is. Okay, so that's easy. This is... Oh, yeah, just take it, just get it, just get it all in frame and take a screenshot. That's all you got to do. Yep, I'm um, getting that for you right now. And for everybody watching as well, I will drop this in. Uh, two, Throw that up here for you. Okay. Um, oh, no. And I'll add this. Bob, that looks perfectly fine to me. That's the sync line. So what's all that other stuff on there? That's not just a... This isn't a sync line. This is a, this is a complete video line. This, has got, this is a Luma signal, Bob. Right. That's on sync. So this device is putting luminance data out over sync. That's what I'm talking about. That's why. That's why this was as weird as it is. 
Now, what, what's the pattern? Is this a is this a black and white pattern that you put up, or is this a color bars pattern that you put up? HD retrovision color bar pattern. And let me turn my monitor back on just to make sure it's going through. Um, yeah. All right. I'll put that back up on the screen for everybody to see. Yeah, I have my monitor on. That's coming through perfectly, and that is on the sync line. So let me switch over to uh, now that I have the trigger in the right place. It would be really interesting, Bob, if you could take the sync output and connect it to a Luma input of a device to see if you get a black and white image. I could absolutely do that in a second. Uh, I just wanted to... Let me see if this is different. Yeah, it's a little different. So let me send you what blue looks like interesting. now. That's interesting. I wonder why it's embedding Luma into the sync output. Of course, the sync data sheet doesn't say anything. I'll, re I'll reference it one more time, but it just says sync. It doesn't say composite sync or vertical sync or anything like that. That's it. That's kind of odd. That's what blue looks like when I just sent you. And I just put it okay, on screen for people here. Yeah, that's messed up. Yeah, there's something wrong there. Yeah, this is, like I was saying, this is one of the oddest things. So this is probably just not a device we should use. No, this is horrible. This is rancid. This is this is the, uh, I'm looking here, the slew rate. Everything's very slow. You don't have nice, fast transitions. Uh, your video is going to look really soft, really soft. Uh, but, of course, that can also just be the nature of the signal that they're working with. I mean, that could just be the, <laughs> this, this just might be what it's going to have to be. Um, Let me try messing no, with the was, dials and back just out of curiosity. Let's see what happens when yeah. you do like sharpness and stuff. See, no. these overshoots concern me. I don't like these overshoots at all. Sharpness, all at sharpness does is increase the ringing, nothing else. Uh, yeah, well, of course it does. Brightness obviously just makes the signal bigger or smaller. Uh, same thing with the uh, the picture changes the uh let me let me take a shot of this picture, for you picture should manipulate probably the the color the the not the picture should manipulate the contrast brightness is just going to limit it's just going to change the amplitude of luma um, so interesting device it's certainly an interesting device, but I think we can do better. Yeah, absolutely. Um, last one just to show you and everybody else here just because we went through them. I'm looking at it. Uh, no, I'm sending it to you in two seconds. Where the hell did I put my oh, keyboard? Okay. Here's my keyboard. I need a bigger damn table. <laughs> this, is, this is so much longer just because I don't have a freaking place to work. Um, well, there's only so much video information you rec you can recover from 3.58 megahertz. I mean, it's just the, the video is... You're taking modulated video and you're color converting it to a high bandwidth video RGB space. And there's going to be serious, serious loss and extreme artifacting as a result of that. So a lot of this stuff could be the hardware used. And a lot of this stuff is just the simple fact that you're taking a shitty video signal and you're trying to massage it to work in a totally different, super high bandwidth, super sexy video state. Okay, so much... go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, my what love. What I just uh, sent to you that I just showed everybody is red uh, with um, mm -hmm. the picture knob in the middle, like it like it has been when um, the entire time I've been taking these, and I'm just sending you another one now with the picture knob all the way down, and it's exactly what I would have expected. All of the weirdness just is the same, but lower. Well, the pro you know why you see all this weirdness? A lot of it, too, is obvious. Is the, the, a lot of the chroma artifacting, you've got a lot of chroma artifacting in this composite video. I bet if you were to do an S video to RGB conversion, these waveforms would look very this, different. This is an S video to RGB conversion. Oh, this is terrible, then. Yeah. Okay, never mind. I'm sorry. Yeah, this is, this is, this is getting red in there. This is getting blue in there. This is getting green in there. And that's, 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 of course, that's going to happen. You can't completely consolidate your color space, your color systems, because that's what composite video is, or that's what chroma is. All right. So this was actually a worthwhile experiment because this taught yeah. us that, you know, this is not, even if this chip 
was super low power and does everything that we wanted it to do, it's not good. It doesn't so. do a, it doesn't do a good job. Not maybe nineteen eighty seven standards, sure. Yeah. But twenty first century, we can do better. Just out of curiosity, I want to see if there's a date on this. Uh, there is not. But I was just yeah, maybe it's something on the board. No. But yeah, this is a pretty older one, but this was kind of neat. So the only other thing related to this is why Why is it? Maybe you could explain for everybody and then I could just send them back to this when I get asked this question. Why is it that we have so many problems converting um, RGB to composite video when RGB to, com uh, to S video seems to always work fine? Because S video is a lot cleaner Signal simply because S video has much better separations in its video system. You have the luminance data completely isolated and non aggregated to the chrominance data. That's a lot easier to deal with for these color conversion systems than when you have this trick. It's really a trick that we call composite video that consolidates all of our color data and all of our brightness data into one modulated signal. That's a lot harder to deal with because a lot of that data you just can't recover. S video, you can deal with brightness separately and you can deal with color data separately. It's a lot more forgiving on equipment. Okay, so it is, it is a realistic expectation to not ever have an RGB to composite generic converter for people that want to do something like, hey, I have an entire RGB setup with a G-SCART that goes into a RetroTINK 5X, but I'm going to use the other SCART output to convert to composite to go to a giant consumer TV. I, I, answered, I answered the opposite way. I, answered your, I understood your question in the opposite manner. I thought you were asking why is it easier color convert S video to RGB as opposed as as opposed to color converting composite video to RGB. You're asking why are RGB to composite conversions so much more of a headache? Yes. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's okay. Bob, that's really a good question. I don't think that it's necessarily more of a headache, Bob. I think it's just that it's such a niche thing that's not been thoroughly um, implemented in our little community because for since 2008, we've all been talking about high fidelity video RGB. Nobody has been interested. There's really not been a market for a product uh, in, in, in what we do to convert composite video to RGB. That's really counterintuitive. Actually, if you think about it, not Mike for Chi us. But and both Mike Chi and Ashen took a look at that, as well as uh, as well as Jim, the uh, Linux bot. Um, and what they they seem to have found is that it was something in the color carrier signal. I'm forgetting. There was a, a, a very specific explanation, and I, was, I asked you just because very often if you ask multiple people the same thing, you get a lot more insight. You know, everybody's perspective is added to it. So, But there was a very specific reason why they thought it couldn't ever be completely solved, and also why some consoles like the Super Nintendo look fine, but other consoles would absolutely look like garbage going through uh, RGB to composite. RGB to S videos always look really great on uh, whatever I've tried. Oh, I know exactly why that's... I, well, I, I can tell you exactly why um, some consoles will fail to even look remotely good as opposed to other consoles. The reason the NES and the Super Nintendo look great or look okay with composite is simply because of the way Nintendo very intelligently designed their video output system. How many lines it puts out in relation to how many samples it puts out in relation to the dot or the, the, the pixel or the, the, the color carrier plot, everything is sort of in phase and aligned. So with the NES and the SNES, you don't get nearly as much dot call as you would say the Neo Geo, uh, PlayStation 1. Even PlayStation looks pretty good. There are some things you can't fix with, uh, on, a, on a generic basis. A, a, good, a good composite RGB circuit that's tailored for the Super Nintendo and the regular Nintendo well, it could look phenomenal. But that same circuit for the Genesis, PlayStation 1, Neo Geo, Philips CDI, it would look so bad. There are, okay. two, there, there are a lot of little corner cases like that. Okay. It, it, would be really, it would be really hard to make, it would be really hard, in my opinion, to make a general purpose composite video to RGB converter that is designed specifically for video games and not television. 
that's that is exactly what everybody else has kind of come to the conclusion of they throw the composite out uh, output on there because it's part of the circuit anyway it's like an extra 40 cents worth of components so they're like whatever try it if it works don't expect it to work um you know but s video has always been the focus of these and that does work fine and that's kind of fair because it's not too hard to find yourself a consumer tv with s video so doing the example of what i just said of having yourself a full rgb setup for you know for your digital side and then grabbing a consumer tv and converting it that way just for ease of use that that seems like a perfectly reasonable thing especially for people that would want to go through all the trouble um i just was hoping there would be some miraculous plug and play solution just for the you know the people that want to have an rgb setup on their uh, flat panel but occasionally play light gun games on their uh you know on their consumer it's, TV. It's, it's interesting that we're talking about this and I'll, I'll say the same thing that i've consistently said for 10 years despite the fact that I'll turn my mic off speech. while you speak, Lord Voltar. Yeah, please. I, I have a man some goddamn respect. But it, it, it's the same thing that I've, I've consistently said for the past 10 years in this community, despite the fact that we, there are those that say we're, we're elitist cuckolds and that we, you know, we, we gatekeep retro gaming stuff, which is nonsense. Had there been, had there been, an S video non mod required option for the Sega Genesis. I never would have given two shits about RGB or component video. If if S video was available on all of my retro video game systems, we would never be sitting here right now. At least I wouldn't be, and I wouldn't be talking to you right now. S video on a CRT is phenomenal. It was wonderful, and I just. Don't think that it gets enough love or it doesn't get the credit that it's truly due. Period. I completely and totally agree. Agree. By the way, it's funny that you you bring up that whole people call us the elitist thing. Do you know there's a group of uh, idiots out there that are starving for attention that say that you and I don't respect anybody that doesn't use a frame meister? And today is the first day I've ever owned a frame meister because somebody that bought a retro tink 5x sold to me there super cheap just so I could use it for b-roll and testing. So I just I don't you know I, I try to keep drama out of my channel. I just thought that was beyond amusing that we're these gatekeeping elitists that look down on people that don't use frame meisters and I've never owned one until today till this morning. <laughs> I don't understand what that even means that we don't respect people who use and enjoy having a frame meister like we look down upon them. I I I think. I think it started out as as one thing and went to another. I don't know. I don't really understand how these bottom feeders work, to be honest with you. I just always thought that was so amusing that I've never used, never owned the device, only used it for testing. And I've always told people any solution that's not a pound cable <laughs> or a hyper crap or that scar to HDMI converter that that guy's been shilling with his Amazon affiliate links for the past 10 years, as long as you don't use those, it's a good solution, period. I can't understand why people make these emotional investments into the fucking materials that they buy. It's just like not too long ago, the one fellow who was all upset because a couple of years ago he invested all this money in SCART cables and now people are buying component cables or that you and I specifically talk maybe a little bit about component cables and we don't talk about SCART as much. Even if we do or don't, what difference does that make? It's like, what, does it have, what bearing does it have if you enjoy your setup? It doesn't matter what I say or talk about. That's not what this is about. Have fun. Yeah. Buy what works for you. That's what this is about. This isn't about gatekeeping people and, and trying to um, 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 <laughs> create these fads. What a bunch of... What, what, what 96 fucking... Cupcake said, Bob's an elitist. He only likes purebred horses. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Bob doesn't oh. go for the mutts now. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I don't know. Remember so, that time? Do you remember that time? I said, do you remember that time you were in upstate Connecticut and you called me at like four a.m. and I was living in Kentucky and you're like, "Hey, I need you to drive eleven hours up here." I said, "What's going on?" You said, "I'm stuck in a field. I'm I'm standing on I'm standing on a step ladder and I'm trying to enter this horse, but I can't. I'm scared. I'm I need you to come up here." You know, I think that's how we should end this stream. I, I will someday tell that story. For real. There is a real horse story. It had nothing to do with me or anybody I know or anything other than it was in the town next to mine. But there really was a horse story, which is which spawned Zach's wonderful, uh, wonderful trolling that I actually do enjoy very much. One of these days we'll tell that on stream, but not today. Yeah, that's, uh, 
that's a teaser to come back for next time. But thank you for jumping on and helping me clarify that. I was kind of stuck at the end, and I'm glad I just quit, uh, quit trying to use my oxidized probes and had you just look at the data sheet. As always, thank you yep. so much to everybody that hung out and watched. This was, uh, I put it right in the chat. This is just supposed to be like a laid-back thing where we did exactly what we did and just hang out, plug stuff into us, <laughs> into other things, and, and see if we can get it to work. So th thanks you so much for everybody for watching. Thank you, Zach, for almost nothing. And uh, we'll see all of you at the next one, I guess. Thanks. God bless.